The story begins as the main character named Lu was walking through the city at night, and in the middle of the night he had an incredibly strong craving for food. The boy's gaze immediately went to the nearest diner. The hero entered the establishment, and was surprised to notice that the hostess was working late today, although she usually closes at 9 o'clock. Sitting at one of the tables was an incredibly pretty lady that Lou immediately took notice of. Looking around, the guy saw that he was surrounded by many beauties, but he didn't understand why they were here. After all, as far as he could remember, the owners used to be an elderly couple, the cafe almost never had guests. Suddenly, another girl of unprecedented beauty approached the guy and asked what the dear guest wanted. Looking at the girl, the guy suddenly had an incredible craving for milk. Embarrassed, the guy also asked for a portion of fried rice to go, and the girl successfully accepted his order. When the guy turned around and saw the ladies looking at him, one of the girls said he was handsome. Meanwhile, the news announced that recently there have been paranormal phenomena, previously such events were considered superstition, recently the phenomenon is now called the resurrection of the supernatural force, the reason for which could occur this phenomenon is still not established, also strongly recommend all citizens to refrain from walking at night. A moment later, the lights in the cafe abruptly shut off. Lou was a little nervous, as he was shocked to hear the news, and the lights were out. As soon as the lights were turned on, there were unknown creatures standing around him and surrounding him. He was stunned because he didn't know what the hell was going on. The unknown creature put its ugly paw right on the guy's shoulder. It was a gene mutation girl who had a huge green paw, she started hitting on the guy, because she thought he was waiting for this chance. If it doesn't happen now, there won't be another chance, sticking out her huge tongue, the girl started to climb into the guy's mouth. Once again, the bulb began to spark incredibly hard, and spew lightning bolts. Even the monsters didn't realize what this creature was, or what was going on. The very creature turned to Lou, if he didn't want to die here, then he needed to swallow the creature. The unknown creature flew right into the guy's body, and it was like it went right in and the guy was able to swallow it. Even though Monster had arbitrarily made the decision for him, but he hoped the guy wouldn't blame him for it, after all, this world had already changed. Lu felt his body begin to change and he began to gain strength. Now was not the time to procrastinate, Monster would have to explain everything a little later, but right now they needed to finish off the monsters. All monsters were indemnified, for the monster that possessed the guy was incredibly mad, his name was Baisho, and he betrayed all of his brothers, and granted power to the man. The monsters have come together to finish off the traitor. Since the man had not yet realized that he had gained power, he was incredibly afraid of all monsters. Baisho inside him, he began to say that they urgently needed to deal with the girl monster, as his strength was already running low. The frightened boy didn't understand what the monster was talking about, and how he would be able to defeat his enemies. Baisho inside the man ordered him not to worry, for he would help him, Lu just had to concentrate and strike. The monster girl began to scream furiously in pain, for the blow had hit her directly. The weakling couldn't even withstand a single blow, and the guy realized the immense power he now possessed. Wickedness, that's what people call monsters whose existence defies scientific explanation. These creatures came into the human world along with a phenomenon called supernatural force resurrection, for unknown reasons mysterious occurrences began to happen in the human world. And now he couldn't help but believe what had seemed absurd to everyone before, because Lu had become one of them. The monster inside the guy ordered him to eat the demon's flesh, the guy took his hand, and prepared to be consumed. Taking a bite, he felt incredibly disgusted. But Baisho ordered him to be patient and not spit anything out. After all, if he didn't eat enough flesh, they would both die. He swallowed the demon fruit with difficulty, and wanted to see how long he would have to do it, for it was incredibly vile. Suddenly, the guy was transported to an incredible place he had never seen before. 
This place was Lu's spiritual world that he was currently in. Until Baisho healed his wounds, he would not recover his body, and only if he recovered would he be able to leave Lu's body. The guy took the monster in his arms, and started going on about how he had spoken so beautifully in the beginning, but really he just needed someone to eat the flesh of these creatures to help heal his wounds. Looking at the guy, the monster didn't see a problem, for if it wasn't for him, Lu would be dead by now. Due to the monster's impoliteness, the guy instantly threw him out, and said that in that case, he would find another master and get rid of him. The monster asked the guy not to even dream, after all, he was a monster named Chilin, the most mysterious creature in the world, he would like to see the person who was capable of banishing him. Selen is a mysterious beast, depicted as a one-horned deer covered with scales according to legends, it should be characterized by kindness and careful treatment of all kinds of wildlife, is a harbinger of happy events. The next day, Events continue to unfold at Bowley Middle School. We seamlessly transitioned into third grade, group number two. The guys in it were arguing about one of them walking around at night, because he hadn't heard of any resurrection of supernatural power. With incredible excitement, one of the classmates asked if Lou had met any monsters. The boy laughed, and said he had swallowed them all himself, for just one of them was digesting in his stomach. That was the thing about Lu, for no one else could blabber like him. Unexpectedly, in front of the hero became a girl who ordered to hand in everyone's homework. He looked at her like he had just fallen in love. All the classmates started to give head girl Duan their homework. The disappointed girl started to walk away, for she knew Lu probably hadn't written anything. Lu immediately questioned if it was really Duan Xiaoxue and if she had plastic surgery, but a classmate said that she had always been like this. Pointing to the picture, Lu started to deny because that's what she used to look like. The way she looked now was completely different from how it was before. Absolutely all of her classmates thought that the girl looked identical to how she looked before. But the guy kept looking at the girl, because he seemed to be the only one who realized it, it was as if Duan Xiaoxue had been replaced. It was also clearly evident that all the guys at school were cracking up at her. Absolutely everyone was paying attention to her and watching her every move. This phenomenon was too suspicious, because it had never happened before. The hero decided to follow the girl, and hid behind some bushes. But suddenly, the lady spotted him at once, and realized who was hiding behind the bushes. As soon as he was discovered, the girl immediately inquired what he was doing here, the guy couldn't think of anything better to say than that he was waiting for someone. Realizing his mistake, he noticed that it was getting late and it was time for him to go home, telling the girl that she had to leave too. Unexpectedly, the girl offered the guy to go with her, the hero was dumbfounded. A while later, the hero lay in bed, and experienced pleasure. The lady also looked at him confusedly, and had a pleasant sensation. They were together in the same bed, how it happened, even Lu himself didn't realize. Well he liked it incredibly much, because it was his first time. Suddenly the hero realized that this is some bullshit and he needs to come to his senses. His hands were not listening at all, and he couldn't move them. The thought of his first time happening to the headman struck him. Lu unexpectedly yelled to the girl to stop. After that, he immediately started to get out of bed to talk to her. He immediately started apologizing, saying that he didn't mean it at all. Duan surely wanted to do that, and noticed that he was incredibly anxious, then asked him to wait, because she wanted to go take a shower. When the girl does, she got out of bed and went to take a shower. The hero immediately breathed a sigh of relief, and his excitement ceased. Before stepping into the shower, the girl threw her bra at his head. And slammed the door behind her, heading for the shower. Selenus immediately appeared beside the guy, Lu meanwhile wanted to understand what was wrong with his classmate, and asked Monster if he could figure out what was wrong with her. The confused monster paid no attention, for he thought Lu wouldn't want him to look, 
but only a fox werewolf could be so seductive. Lu immediately began to analyze the situation, and wanted to understand what the fox werewolf's weaknesses were, Kalen replied that there were as many as five. First weakness, the fox werewolf is afraid of monsters. Her second weakness was that she was afraid of wizards. The third weakness, was that she was afraid of the gods. Also, fourth weakness, she's afraid of the rich. And fifth, she fears the virtues. Unfortunately, out of the entire list Selenus had listed, Lu realized that nothing fit. The lady came out of the bathroom, and exclaimed that she had finally washed herself. Smiling, Lu shouted to her if she had cleaned herself well and why she hadn't rinsed off her dirt. The shocked fox didn't realize how the guy figured it out. The hero boldly replied that anyone could smell the stench of a fox from afar. In that case, the girl didn't need to pretend anymore, she was furious, and said that here came Lu's death. Meanwhile, Selenus counted the tails, and suddenly realized that this fox werewolf was a six-tailed fox. The fight between the two monster people started and they committed to punching each other. The fox werewolf girl was incredibly spry, but the guy's agility was not at all inferior to her. After another attack, the girl grew another tail. Selenius immediately realized that things smelled fried and ordered Lou to run away from here. After all, if it's a nine-tailed fox, they'll both be finished. As soon as the fox saw that Lu was about to run away, he immediately blocked his door. The bold fellow immediately courageously started attacking the werewolf fox. Suddenly, Lu fought off her hand, and took a leap. This jump was aimed directly at the window, smashing the glass of the window with his body, he jumped out of the building. With a smile on his face and incredible joy, he said goodbye to the stinky fox. Thus, the hero realized that the girl with the other monster also had a fusion, just like Selenius had with Lu. Looking around, the guy was afraid lest the girl catch up with him. In fact, Selenius explained that this was different, for not all magical beings are kind like him, for they hate just such people the most. When the supernatural force resurrection began, beings with the ability to penetrate the bodies of people with similar traits gradually took over their bodies, thoughts, memories, and desires. That girl must have become such a liberated beauty just because of the influence of the werewolf fox. But unfortunately, Lou realized something the very former headwoman had never been a liberated beauty in her life, and it had absolutely nothing to do with old age, for she had always been cultured and poised. Kaylin looked at the hero, and thought that this can't be happening. Could it be that something terrible has happened? As suddenly, they both realized that they had been fooled, and it wasn't a fox werewolf at all. The boy immediately took Selenius in his arms, and indignantly began to talk about how the monster had promised him with his experience and power to make him the most invincible in this world filled with monsters. Selenus was incredibly frustrated, for he had actually said that, but he couldn't put it into practice. After which, he immediately decided to show Lu his wounds, all those glowing dots on his body are wounds, right now he is not even able to realize what kind of creature is in front of him due to his eyes being wounded. The hero realized that he was wrong about the monster, and clarified what he had managed to heal the last time he ate the monster's flesh. Selenus wasn't going to treat anything yet, after all he wanted to give the guy a choice, he didn't care which wound to treat right now. The monster's body looked like a system with a skill tree. But Selenius didn't understand what he was talking about, but probably something like, with every wound healed, Lu would gain a new skill, and the guy immediately suggested in that case to restore his eyes, they need to understand how to deal with enemies after all. Healing Healer has immediately activated the Golden Gaze ability, it is worth it to look at a creature with Golden Gaze and it can immediately tell what it is. Moments later, the guy had already started walking up to his classmate's house to see who she really was. The guy stormed into the house kicking in the door and yelled that they hadn't seen each other in a while and he even missed them. As soon as he activated the Golden Gaze, 
he immediately saw the girl's true nature. It was the masked girl, she was able to turn foxy, this means that the classmate was constantly hiding her true identity under a mask, otherwise, she wouldn't be able to arouse the interest of the masked girl. The unsure guy immediately asked Selenius if the masked woman could be defeated, the monster confidently replied for the guy to act. The masked woman was about to go looking for him herself, but he came back for his own death. With incredible agility, Lu jumped several meters up, and began tugging on the girl's tails. With his inhuman strength, he was able to rip off her guise, and he wanted to see what she was hiding. The girl cried out frantically in pain, for she was declassified. Regardless of the girl's screams, the guy continued to launch powerful lightning attacks. He was shocked when he saw that he had defeated the monster with a single blow. Lu puzzled asked what he should do now, and what would happen to her when she woke up again. Selin smiled at first not understanding the guy's question, but he ordered to eat her quickly while she lay unconscious. Looking at the girl, the guy was once again dumbfounded by the monster's request, for he clearly didn't want to eat his classmate. Upon realizing Selenius' request, he immediately thought it was a joke. The unperturbed monster had indeed told him, in order to sustain life, they needed to constantly consume the flesh of unknown creatures. The energy from the last meal was almost over, if they missed this chance, there was no telling when they would be able to feed on flesh again, realizing this the guy realized that he really didn't want to die. But still, there was no way he wanted to eat his classmate. The monster inside the guy immediately became indignant, he didn't like Lou's answer. Selenus yelled out that the guy was incredibly indecisive, if he couldn't get a piece down his throat, then the monster himself could take over the guy's body. After all, he could eat her himself, but suddenly, Lu yelled for the monster to stop. The hero started leaning in, and wouldn't let the monster eat a classmate. Begging not to touch the girl, Lu held Monster's hand and wouldn't let him touch his classmate, but Monster resented it, after all, they had done it before. It was completely different, because it was his classmate. In her memories, this girl was completely different, but her real self was kind. She had even helped him before, because he hadn't done his homework, and if the teacher didn't ask for his homework, she wouldn't say he hadn't turned it in. But Kalen was undeterred, he didn't care at all. The unperturbed monster began to devour the girl, and he started at the neck. Taking a bite of the purple flesh he sated himself with its energy and power. After that, he swallowed every last drop. As soon as he ate part of the girl's body, he immediately gave him back his body. But luckily, the guy discovered that the monster hadn't touched the body of the girl herself, and hadn't eaten her. He only talked about magical creatures, and there was no talk of him eating humans. From the incredible fright, the guy started to feel incredibly dizzy and couldn't stand on his feet comfortably. Actually, it was because Kalen had been in his body for too long, for now, it would be a bit difficult for him to stand on his feet, but once he rested a bit, it would go away immediately. The hero also wondered how long this masked woman's flesh would last, the monster replied that for three days, this means that you have to find someone else within three days, otherwise, they could die at any time. A while later, night fell and events continued to unfold at a classmate's house. From fatigue the boy fell asleep, but after a while he woke up. When he woke up, he didn't even realize where he was. The girl met him at once, for she had been waiting for him to wake up. In front of the guy still sat an incredibly beautiful girl who was sweet and charming. Literally at the same time, they asked each other how they were feeling. Immediately awkwardness followed, for it was unusual for them to show concern for each other. Overcome with awkwardness and uncertainty, the guy replied that he was fine. The innocent girl immediately asked if Lu knew what that thing was inside her. By way of explanation, the hero said that she had some sort of demon in her, but now she was back to her old self. Looking at the girl, the guy also realized that her appearance hadn't changed at all. 
Instantly he began to question his inner monster, for he wondered why she had not returned to her former form, Kaelin immediately answered that people who entered contact with the unknown would always experience side effects, and this was that side effect. The lady approached the worried fellow with interest, for she wanted to know more about the situation. Overcoming her excitement, Lu was able to squeeze out that if a demon possessed her, the side effects would remain forever. These side effects were extremely unusual, because as them the girl got incredible beauty. The girl is so much prettier now, and the fact that those side effects remain is pretty good. The lady had another question, for she wanted to understand why the demon had possessed her. It was because they were similar to each other. These beings are called the unknowns, and the one that possessed her was called the masked one, they are masterful at pretending. But the boy also thought there was nothing wrong with her in her present guise. The possession of such demons doesn't just happen. Perhaps the hero soon in the near future will have to find out what secret the girl is hiding. A while later, the guy came home and realized he couldn't go on like this. Instantly, a trail of lightning began to appear on Lu's body. And on it immediately arose Kalen, who wondered why the guy no longer wants to continue this, the hero needs to find the power of the unknown, but if he cannot do it in time, what will happen then? And afterward, the guy wanted to heal another of Selenius' wounds, and was thinking about which one to heal next. First he needs to heal what will keep him alive, or else he will die when he meets the limbless one. With excitement, the guy immediately asked what Selenius' fastest paw was. The monster replied that he could choose any one, for each had its own gimmick, the lad also wondered if he should choose the nose. The nose was clearly not worth choosing because the spiritual powers had only just recovered, he would be much faster with his legs, it would be more useful now. The hero decided to heed the monster's advice, and chose the skill of pumping one of the legs. With the recovery of his leg, his thunder step ability was activated, now he not only runs fast, but he can also climb walls. The hero's joy can be seen in his facial expression. With peace of mind, he turned off the light, and went to bed. The next morning, the events continued to take place at Bowley Middle School. A classmate asked another classmate how much yesterday's homework was worth, the guy immediately asked him what subject he needed homework in, he needed homework in all subjects. A smart classmate replied that the cost of homework is 45 yuan, and suddenly the head of the class walked in. She immediately overheard a conversation between two classmates about buying homework. The enterprising classmate also said that yesterday there was homework in four subjects, but there was a lot of assignments in math, so there was 15 yuan for it. With equanimity and a desire to make money, he asked if a classmate was taking his homework. The indignant classmate immediately exclaimed who would pay today, because he didn't have enough money. Lu immediately turned to his two classmates, and said that he had already transferred the money, because today was his treat. The hapless classmate was incredibly grateful to him, for he hadn't spent a single yuan to get his homework. Suddenly, a classmate selling homework took a customer by the arm. The guy immediately became indignant, for he didn't understand what the matter was, and asked if the money had come to him. The smart guy immediately said that only Lu could rewrite his homework, and whether they cheated off him or not, he didn't care. The classmate was still unspeakably glad, for he thought something else, and asked the enterprising fellow not to worry, all the rules he remembered. The headmistress continued to watch, and didn't realize what was happening in this classroom now. Meanwhile, the homework cheating has begun. Lu began cheating off his homework with incredible expression and speed, and all of his classmates stood over him to cheat off his homework afterward. The guy finished pretty quickly, and when his classmates rewrote, he asked them to give all the notebooks to the old age. Suddenly, the headman approached the boy, and addressed him. She was acting rather strangely, and asked what was wrong. The hero started to follow her, and asked what was wrong. People was incredibly nervous and didn't know how to say it, 
but she asked what they were doing in class. It was the girl's first time coming to school so early, Lu knew what she wanted to ask, Dao Su Gung always did that, and sold homework. She knew that, that he was like that, but she didn't expect him to charge them money, also raise the price. That was still nothing, but one time, Lu remembered a really very strange incident. One school day, Dao Su Gung approached the boy and addressed him. He asked if he remembered eating one chip from him yesterday. The hero began to yawn, for he hadn't given it much thought, and said that it really was. Suddenly, Dao Su Gung poked the phone right into the hero's face. These were calculations regarding the fact that there are only 75 G worth 5, 8 yuan in a pack of chips, one chip weighs 2 to 2, 5 G, and if rounded up, Lu owes him 0, 19 yuan. That's when the guy freaked out. Even the head girl was shocked by this, as she hadn't expected such a thing from her classmate. The lady didn't understand how he could act like that. Suddenly, Lu found something going on in the classroom. There was something unusual going on that they noticed immediately. Their classmate was lying on the floor, and holding on to his arm while screaming in pain. The hero immediately asked what happened, the other classmate also asked him, didn't he Dao Su Gung like Lin Shuang, because just now, Lin Shuang was drinking milk, and this happened. She poured milk into her mug. Afterward, she accidentally spilled milk on her skirt. She felt immediately embarrassed and asked her classmates for a napkin. Dao Su Gung immediately came over and said he had a napkin and gave it to the girl. But his hands suddenly clenched, and he couldn't give the girl a napkin for nothing. He, on the other hand, was rubbing his arm more and more firmly while feeling uncomfortable. Through force, he told her to get the wipes and use them for free but a voice inside him was telling him to charge her. The classmate immediately told him if he didn't want to, then let him not give, because she thought he was already going crazy. With just a touch, a classmate managed to destroy an entire desk. Everyone immediately thought maybe he was stressed out from studying or schizophrenic. It was indeed possible, and Lu decided to take him to the nurse's station. Empathetic Lu decided to pay instead of his classmate, and transferred two yuan to Dao Su Gung's account. And afterward, to an innocent classmate, he threw a whole bunch of tissues. When they stepped aside, the hero winked at Dao Su Gung, and after all, he wanted to discuss a deal with him. The boys walked to the backyard of the school where no one was present. Something suspicious Dao Su Gung asked why they had come here, but Lu asked a counter question, and asked what had happened to him in class. The classmate didn't realize it himself, he felt as if someone inside him was trying to fight. With a desire to take him out, he asked if he gave him 10,000 yuan to kill him, he would do it. Puzzled, Dao Su Gung looked at Lu, for he thought he was joking, and replied that he couldn't have done that. But all of a sudden, it was like he was jammed. After which, ominously Dao Su Gung shouted out that he wouldn't be able to miss such a chance. Lu knew it, and immediately activated the Golden Gaze. With the help of the Golden Gaze, the hero was able to realize that this is the goblin, who at every opportunity to profit, he has incredible greed, which cannot hide, but at the same time, is very worried about his importance, if you constantly scold him, his mood will immediately deteriorate. Lu shouted that it would be easy and he would kill him. But suddenly, he discovered something terrible. Everything was incredibly blurry, not much time had passed yet, one couldn't use the golden gaze so quickly, after all, the body hadn't recovered yet. A moment later, the goblin was already unleashing an incredibly powerful attack on Lu, while he tried to defend himself. He had to act quickly, for his life was in danger, but he saw nothing in front of him. Suddenly, we're transported to events that took place two years ago. This was back in the days of elementary middle school. Outside the door, the parents were discussing that maybe the mother shouldn't get treatment. Because now it's late stage, the treatment won't work. 
Chemotherapy is incredibly expensive and the risks are huge, the father was afraid they would just lose everything, their son had just bypassed middle school, they would need a lot of money for other expenses. The woman was crying, but she realized it was real. Dad decided to opt for conservative solutions, maybe. Suddenly, Dao Su Gung burst into the room and shouted no. With unbelievable anger, he also shouted out why his father didn't want to save his mom. Rushing to his mother, he said that he would not go to school, and it would be better to spend the money on his mother's treatment. The boy threw himself into his mother's tender arms and she began to stroke his head. He was furious, and he kept saying he didn't want his mom to die. After that, we were transported to the events that took place a year ago. A father approached his son to give him money, but the boy replied that he already had it. After all, he earned them at his school. My father immediately resented it, for to him it was nonsense, his main task was his studies, they had enough money and he didn't need to earn it. Turning around, Dao Su Gung replied that he used to think that there was enough money too, but what was the result, and where is mom now? The incredibly upset father kept thinking that his son was blaming him, but Dao Su Gung didn't see the point of blaming his father, after all, he knows that there was no other way out back then, but he also realized. That money is never too much, and he doesn't want to lose any more people close to him. So now everything he will do is for one thing only. Namely, money. The guy completely transformed into a goblin, and a furious fight ensued. Suddenly, Lu began to retreat to launch a surprise counterattack. He ran precisely towards the exit to make an attack completely unexpected. When the goblin pounced on the guy behind him, he used the thunder step. And afterward, when he jumped, Kalen ordered him to insult the goblin, and Lu called him a dumb freak. The goblin looked at the guy in surprise, and didn't understand why he was saying that, after all it didn't work, he should have come up with something dumber. When once again Lu called the goblin a stupid jerk, the headman noticed it, for it was incredibly loud. The goblin was about to jump up to catch up to Lu and hit him. Suddenly, the headman entered the backyard and asked what they were doing here. There's no way she expected to see a goblin fighting Lu here. The goblin was also incredibly furious, and was ready to finish anyone off. Lu immediately noticed that someone had come in. The incredibly loud girl began to scream, for she was very frightened of the huge green goblin. This scream was incredibly painful for the goblin, he began to scream in pain as well, and plugged his ears. Even Lu was pained to hear it, and he wondered if it was the head woman making that sound. The boy asked the headman to stop immediately, because he would deal with him, the girl immediately realized that this monster was Do Shuegan, and she also did not understand what Lu was doing on the roof, because it seemed that he was praying to the heavens. The guy finding an excuse said that his eyes could not see anything, and he wanted to try to do gymnastics, suddenly it would help, the girl should not worry, because he would soon get better. The girl noticed that the goblin had already recovered and was ready to attack, so she shouted for Lu to stop chilling. Lu should have massaged the acupuncture points and recovered, and the girl should have scolded the goblin, but she feels more like scolding Lu at this point. The goblin began to growl furiously, and glared at the girl while doing so. Whereupon, with his huge paws and open mouth he lunged at the lady. The incredibly worried girl realized that the goblin had noticed her, and begged Lu to intervene faster. The hero immediately got to the lady's defense, and rushed to attack the treacherous goblin, delivering a powerful attack right on its head. In literally one blow, the goblin screamed in pain and flew off in the other direction. Kalen had finally recovered, and could help Lu. Closer and closer the hero was getting to the treacherous goblin, and he kept saying that he would come to an end. The goblin continued the operation, and was also striking at Lu. He had incredible strength, and could easily thwart the hero's attacks. The uncomprehending fellow flew several dozen meters to the side, for the goblin had knocked him over. 
after which, instantly hit the door that was near the headman. Life literally began to pour out of his mouth, and he screamed frantically in pain. The goblin gloated, and was ready to continue the battle, for he wasn't even tired. He laughed, and began to walk over to the girl to continue his attack on Lu. The nasty green goblin lifted Lu by the head above the ground, and mockingly laughed at him. The girl looked at it, and it was extremely hard, for she was worried about the guy. But suddenly, she turned to the goblin, and called him a piece of shit, and said he just had a little buddy. The headman started insulting him, she realized that his buddy was not small and he just wasn't there at all. The offending goblin immediately threw the guy to the ground. In rage he began to scream, with his rotten teeth he wanted to gnaw at the girl's flesh. By doing so, he kept the headman in fear, and she began to get very nervous. Suddenly, the goblin felt something. It was Lou, who was holding his leg with all his might so that he couldn't attack the headman. Exclaiming, the girl asked him to seize the opportunity that had been given to him. Confused, the guy turned to Selenus, and asked, could he use the thunder step again, it was possible to do so, but would be the same as with the eyes. If he uses thunder step, he'll be on the ground for half a day afterward, and then the goblin will have a chance to tear him to shreds. The hero decided to take a chance, and with all his might he activated the thunder step. He pulled the goblin back into the school, and he leaned in and didn't want to be there. It took an incredibly large amount of energy, as the goblin was extremely heavy. But gradually, the goblin began to turn into a familiar classmate. As soon as they entered the school premises, the classmate took on his usual form. And it was like the goblin was starting to lose its shape. The lads lay immobilized on the ground, for none of them had any strength left for the fight that followed. Lu was able to absorb the goblin with his last strength, and completely ate it. The headman meanwhile looked at the classmate who had just lost his demon power, and was completely immobilized. Every last drop and particle of the green goblin went into Lu's mouth. The lady immediately turned around and asked if the hero was okay. A little nervous, the guy covered his mouth, and replied that it was fine. The outraged classmate immediately started asking questions, because she wanted to know how it happened and what kind of monster it was. In addition, he was blown away like smoke, but Lu was undeterred and said he didn't know. Puzzled, the girl continued to insist, for she wanted an explanation of the whole situation. Heroes agreed to tell her, but she had to help him excuse himself from class, and he fell to the ground. The uncomprehending girl leaned over to the guy to ask what was wrong. He was feeling a little unwell and it felt like he had broken his legs. A short while later, they were sitting together in a cafe, and discussing that he and Do Shuegan had both suffered from these unknown. The guy honestly decided to answer her, and said that he was the one who was hurt the most in the situation. The nosy girl asked why his legs had already recovered in such a case. Finding an excuse, the hero said that he just lay on the roof for a while, that's all healed, but the headmistress understood that he was much stronger than ordinary people, like a superhero from a movie. Unfazed hero didn't consider himself a superhero, after all, if she hadn't come to his rescue, he'd have all his bones shattered. With interest, the girl also asked if Lu knew why the masked woman had chosen her. After all, after Lu ripped off her mask, she became like this, and she can even swear now. Lu was even a little amused by this, and he started laughing. The girl clearly didn't like it, as she didn't think it was funny. But the kid confidently said it was very funny. After all, it doesn't hide the swear words. And the very thoughts that trigger them. It seemed to her sometimes that if no one in this world swore, it would be better, and she would be the most ordinary girl in the world. Affectionately placing his hand on her head, he stroked it. There are many injustices, vile people and disgusting places in this world, if you don't swear, then how can you express the longing in your soul in such a case? Swearing is not bad, 
you just have to do it at the right moment, then you can even save some superhero. The headman really realized that Lu had said his speech very wisely. Suddenly, the lady got up, and said her treat, for he had saved her, and comforted her, but Lu thought the girl should not pay, and it was she who had saved him. Suddenly, the two of them got fifty-six yuan each. It was the same classmate who showed the wire transfer and said he was the one giving them a treat. The dumbfounded guy and his girlfriend were discussing that if he spent the money, the world might end. Feeling guilty, the classmate asked them not to make such faces, for he was trying hard to save money so that he would not lose the people close to him. But he realized that if he went to extremes, he could lose all the connections that were important to him in the future. The boy knew they had helped him take his former form, and he wanted them to be his friends. Lu didn't know what he was talking about, since they had been friends for a long time, and hugged them. Behind Lu, a certain green spirit suddenly started to come out. It was a small goblin that was incredibly angry. Meanwhile, the events continued to happen, but with different characters, he was a no-name specialist, his name was Nan Jinghong. He asked if they were doing okay here, the girl sitting next to him replied that they were doing business according to all the rules. Suddenly, Nan Jinghong picked up his clothes, and started to leave. Also, he inquired what the girl's words meant, such as, according to the rules. The lady immediately pounced on the man, and begged her brother not to leave her. She snuggled a little closer to him, because truth be told, sometimes they would make exceptions to the rules. The man felt disgusted, for he did not like the woman's answer. He immediately pushed the girl away, and asked for whom. She takes it, she falls to the ground from the man's push. The outraged woman began to make excuses, because he doesn't like it by the book, not by the book either, she thought, he just likes to bully people. The man was standing right over the girl, and didn't think he was bullying people. Nervous, the lady didn't understand what he meant and thought he was overreacting. Undeterred the man ordered the girl to finish, for he could smell that sulfurous odor from her body. In an instant she turned and saw the silver dagger of hybrid oil, it seemed to her that today her death had come. The lady was covered in sweat, the man continued to stand with the knife and apologized to her for what happened. The lusty lady offered to spare her, and she would thank him in the best way possible. But Nan Jinghong didn't think it was appropriate, her answer didn't please him at all. Now he was interested in the main question, how to report everything to the Department of Unknowns, because they had so sincerely offered him cooperation. Suddenly, the gyroscooter replied to him that there was a 2% chance that management would end their cooperation with him because of this case. That was indeed true, but the main problem was that he might lose credibility. After all, he couldn't tell the truth, all he could say was that she had run away. The gyroscooter again responded that there was an 83% chance that management would know the truth. Nan Jinghong immediately realized that it was better to focus on the other unknowns. In such a case, there is a 95% probability of finding a limbless person in the county. By chance the man discovered one unknown, and told him that he saw that he had tasted something delicious. It was, who was just walking down the street. Walking past him, Nan Jinghong asked if he liked it. Without realizing what had happened, Lu realized something was wrong. The man turned, and again asked if he liked what he had just eaten. Selenus instantly appeared beside the boy, and ordered him to run quickly. An opponent unbeknownst to him stood on his gyroscooter and watched what was happening. Meanwhile, Lu activated the thunder step to escape from the unknown man as quickly as possible. The gyroscooter affirmatively said that the probability of escape was 0%. And immediately activated an unusual ability, in the form of a red laser. With the help of this laser, the man was able to realize that it was a selenium, he had an incredible interest in it. At the same time, Lu ran with all his legs to the building upstairs. With the help of his incredible power and magical abilities, 
he was able to climb right up onto a building, and running on top of it. He observed that the man was not following him. The Lindless Hunter wasn't so simple, using a gyroscooter he was able to climb to the top of the building hovering on the oddball mechanism. As soon as the hero sensed danger, he immediately jumped off the creature, and once again continued running. When he landed on the ground, he discovered something unusual. He had had enough of the extremely strange feeling that had never haunted him before. He stood on some sort of magical seal that had been placed by the obscurity hunter himself. With this seal, Lu was completely shackled, and couldn't make a single movement. Nan Jinghong sat across from him on a chair, and calmly watched him and his torment. The indignant man immediately asked who he was, for he was neither human nor Selenus. The unshaken fellow continued to remain silent, for he was furious. Suddenly, the man realized that there was no man here, or no known man. After all, there were only two pigs here, and he ordered Baisho to come out. The monster immediately started talking to him through Lu's body, and asked what the man needed from him. Hunter wondered why Baisho was hiding in a human body. Baisho replied, that he was just afraid that the great unknown expert would grab him. The clueless expert told Baisho to stop being snide and be serious, because people had organized the clueless department, and he could get him a job there, and Baisho could get treatment at the same time. The mechanism announced to the man that Baisho's probability of consent was 0-2%. In fact, the probability was 0%, Baisho started to leave, and Lu ordered him to stay with the kid some more. The big one immediately stepped out of the guy's body, and Lu asked if they knew each other. Nan Jinghong did not deny it, after all, they had indeed met before, and were acquaintances. As suddenly, Lu started to transform into a green goblin, his hand also became the goblin's hand. With incredible speed, he began to run away from the know-nothing hunter. Even though there was a 0% chance of Bei Sha escaping, the man understood. What better let him run away, they had just devoured the goblin and hadn't had time to digest yet, if pushing them now, Bai Shou might die, seemingly clueless and not even realizing that food should be chewed thoroughly. Memories began to come back to the hero, of him consuming the green goblin. He begged the head teacher to let him out of class faster, because he didn't want his classmates to see him with a mouthful of blood. As it turned out, it failed to digest this time. Hiro and Baisho were outraged beyond belief, and didn't know what to do with the Green Goblin. After all, he was their target, and should have satiated Baisho. Today, Baisho wished to use the flesh without the known to restore his stomach, this goblin can be divided into two portions. It was good for the two of them, as Lu also came up with a skill he wanted to get. Meanwhile, in real life, a guy fell unconscious to the ground. He felt bad enough, but his body was taking on its former appearance. At the same time, the obscurity hunter was watching him. He was surprised that Lu didn't even notice him, because thanks to him, no one had eaten him yet, and he couldn't even say thank you. Either way, the hunter was going to turn him in. The man asked the Sigway to contact the old man to send people, the mechanism replied that the probability of successfully sending a message was 100%. A while later, the men the old man had summoned arrived. They were amazed at the large number of celebrity-less people, because before they had doubts, they thought their idol might be cheating. Even though all of these unknowns were Class B, it was still impressive to finish off so many at once. And because existence without the known was only recognized a couple of weeks ago, such a resurrection of supernatural power has not been seen for over 1000 years. And the department where the people came from was also founded a week ago. There may have been few before the resurrection of the Limbless, but they still existed. And already at that time, three great experts, Nan Jinghong, Chan Chandai and Tong Huabi, were fighting monsters. The lady was immediately indignant, for the fellow had not even mentioned the name of the head of the department. 
The chief has of course been doing research and providing them with some machinery, but it is said that when he was asked to come out of retirement, he was so pathetic that the other two chiefs paid no attention to him. Outraged, the girl didn't understand how the whole world had become like this, if they didn't need anything else. When the girl pushed the unknown device, it rolled the other way. And suddenly started beeping, the girl immediately leaned into him. Using her wrist gadget, she discovered something unusual. It was a trace of an unnamed S-Class. The guy and the girl immediately began to patrol, but it was already late, and they were quite tired, although they continued to do it, because without no more active just at night. Specialists had already cleaned up the area, and the girl doubted whether it was necessary to inspect it. After her hesitation, the bracelet immediately started making sounds. It was a signal that there really was an unknown, they needed to escape quickly. The guys found out that a clueless girl was killing another girl. She was incredibly bloodthirsty and strong, much stronger than the limbless ones they had seen before. As soon as she finished off the girl she was after, she immediately turned to the hunters of the unknown. They were intimidated by the fact that she had killed an unnamed class B in an instant. Suddenly, she immediately disappeared, the hunters never saw her again. The manual obscurity detector couldn't even determine the class of obscurity. A while later, the men called Jing Hong to eat with them. The man was surprised, for it was right in the morgue. It didn't bother anyone at all, because they would all end up here at some point. Ching Hong agreed, and decided to sit down to eat with the men. They were also interested in whether Ching Hong helped Lao Ma with matters. The hunter did help, he also finished off a couple unknowns, but he noticed that the teacher wasn't happy. In fact, it was only a semblance of displeasure, after all, it was not easy for ordinary people to endure the resurrection of supernatural power, and he was glad that there were people responsible like him. The obscurity hunter realized that ordinary people have an easier life. The teacher wondered why Ching Hong had called him here, after all, he was much stronger than him. Scratching the back of his head, the man admitted to the teacher that he wasn't the smartest student. With a dark look, the teacher looked Ching Hong straight in the eyes, and asked him to guess how many people had entered here every day since the beginning of the supernatural resurrection. The man didn't know the answer, so he asked how much. The old man did not know this, for he had not practiced them, but still it was a considerable number. However, those who are brought here are still lucky. And the unlucky ones who were swallowed by the unknown in terrible agony. Standing up from the table, the elder asked Ching Hong to follow him. They approached the cells with the dead together. A moment later, the elder began to open one of the cells. In it lay a man who had been bitten and stiffened and killed with a horrified expression on his face. The men looked at him, and analyzed what could have happened. This man was mutilated for fun, it should probably be a no-name at least S-class. The old man also noticed that the two bites on the man's neck were made at the same time. The obscurity hunter immediately guessed that it might be a snake. The old man continued to smile as if nothing had happened, for the man's guess was correct. This monster was very cruel, it could only be killed by a lightning discharge, we would have to summon Tuna Huabi. The experienced elder immediately realized that Ching Hong was playing a fool. After all, he had one familiar Selenus who could handle the serpent. In the meantime, we are transported to Lu's room, he just sneezed really hard. He sneezed, he didn't even have a cold though, and he was probably being recalled by someone. Late at night, the head woman lay in her bed, and thought about Lu swallowing that limbless man, but somehow it was still happening to her. It was like she was wandering in another world. But I hoped it wouldn't happen again today. As if changing her appearance, she rose from the bed and her eyes glowed a bright red light. Surrounding her was the aura of the unknown, for she herself was possessed by the unknown. The next day, Lu was at school and calmly strolled down the hallway. Suddenly, 
he found the headman chatting with someone. It was the same obscurity hunter, he told the old age that he was Lu's older brother. Lu was immediately taken aback, for this weirdo Nan Jinghong had come and decided to harass him again. Lu's reaction caused the headman to look surprised. Regardless, she started waving her hand at the guy with incredible confidence, and yelling that his brother had come to see him. The shocked boy realized that this man could not be his brother, for he was twice his age, and asked the headman to leave them, for Lu wanted to talk to the imposter. The lady quietly left, for she did not want to disturb the two brothers. The hero immediately realized that the man had come for Baisho. But in fact, Jing Hong had come for him, for he needed Lu's help. At this moment, Lu thought about the man not wanting to attack him, and affirmatively replied that the Bisho had already turned him down. The cocky man repeated that he had come specifically for Lu. It seemed to the hero that the man didn't understand their relationship with Bei Sha. But he understood it all, because all he had to do was let the hero eat a limbless S-class and he would be fed for a month. After all, didn't he want to get back to normal? The incredibly surprised guy didn't understand how he could help the man in such a case, after all, he wasn't as strong as Bai Shou. This was indeed true, Jing Hong was going to fight the limbless one and he would need to help, he needed Lu to use the power of thunder to break through the limbless one's defense. The surprised guy didn't expect it to be so easy. But the clever obscurity hunter confirmed that it really is that simple. The hero agreed, and they cemented their connection and agreement with a handshake. After entering Baishu's inner world again, Lu apologized to him, for he had made the decision for him. But it didn't matter that much to Baisho, because if he started to stop Lu, he wouldn't talk to him. The guy was incredibly beginning to be interested in Selenius' relationship with this Jing Hong. But instead of bringing up such boring topics, it's better to keep an eye on the situation in the outside world, replied Baisho. A while later, Lu along with Jing Hong arrived at their destination. The building was incredibly beautiful, it was immediately obvious that their organization was not even 10 days old. Everyone said that they had even invited some other organizations to work with them, but Jing Hong didn't go into details. A little nervous, Lu realized they had quite a bit of power. Jing Hong didn't think so, though. After all, the people working in the organization are some people, and the hunters are completely different people. At the same time, somewhere in the unknown world, a certain woman was told that there had been a lot of unknowns going missing lately. And she ordered the monsters to scout the situation. The monsters saw everything, and reported to the mistress that the unknown had been brutally murdered. To the mistress, it was the unknown aura, and she wanted to find out who killed the unknowns. It was a certain lady who still couldn't be traced. The same headman who possessed fear strength, and was much stronger than ordinary unknowns. Shifting into the events that were happening in the organization, Lu didn't understand what the obscurity hunter had told him. Did he really think that compared to the people from this place, their relationship with him was closer? A while later, they came to the meeting place, but Lu was worried, for he was now also an unknown. The man sighed heavily at first but afterward, started to open the door. In front of them sat Chief Ma. He was glad that Jing Hong had come to him. And he immediately wanted to know how they ended up in his possession. The men were here because they needed all the material on the snake. The benevolent boss invited them to sit down and talk, for he had just bought some excellent tea. Suddenly, Jing Hong pounded on the table in fury, and shouted that he needed them now. The boss picked up on the fact that the man had an incredible temper, he had been like this since he was a kid. In that case, Jing Hong felt that they should no longer cooperate and he would be on his own. The boss asked him not to make any hasty decisions, after all, the snake materials had already been handed over to Deputy Jean, if he took the snake case now, he would lose his reputation. The man was not at all interested in reputation, for it was not worth people's lives. 
Does their department deal with the clueless or just promoted with aggression he asked, and knocked over the tea that was on the table. All the tea sets were broken because of the man's aggression. Lou was clearly uncomfortable, standing there watching in shock at what was happening. Instantly, the supervisor pulled out a certain briefcase, which he placed on the table. These were the very materials on the snake that Jing Hong had demanded. The warden hid it well, but he still found the materials. Jing Hong still was indignant, after all, there was no need for this circus. The boss got up from his desk, for he wanted to go and rest, and since the man had taken the material away from him, he had better get his old bones out of here. With interest, Jing Hong asked the boss if what he did was true. Unperturbed, he looked at the chief, and mumbled that he had a new tea set off him now. The vacationing boss wanted a black pattern set. As soon as they started to leave, they said goodbye to the man, and asked him to send the report card, for Jing Hong must receive extra pay for his work. Since they had come here anyway, Jing Hong asked the chief to issue them some weapons. The protagonist was immediately interested in it. What Lu saw next thrilled him. For he discovered before him an incredible arsenal where many weapons were hidden. He was interested in every single thing that was in that arsenal. The thing he wore on his arm was called a detector that could determine how strong a clueless person was, but the guy didn't need it because he already had Baisho. Afterward, the guy pulled out a new unknown object and asked what it was. The man immediately asked if he had played Pokemon and if he knew what a Pokeball was, but he didn't need to or he'd eat it. Sighing heavily, the man realized that it was all high-tech garbage anyway. And he gave him some sort of weapon, since he couldn't use it anyway. The thing looked like a bone, Lou thought it was spare food. The hunter asked to try to get the guy to inject the power of thunder inside. As soon as he did so, he found that the bone began to take on an incredible sword shape, and with the help of the lightning bolts, it improved. This thing was pretty awesome, Lu wondered if Jing Hong had used it before. The hunter looked at the guy with confidence and replied that he had used her. With astonishment the lad asked if he had the power of thunder in that case. Getting a little frustrated, the man couldn't answer anything to that. The hero immediately realized that he didn't, because he called him for help and said he couldn't use the thing, which meant he was now. Suddenly, the Baisho inside Lu asked him not to say anything unnecessary. The man started to leave and asked the lad to see the materials, for tomorrow they must act. Slightly embarrassed, the hero agreed with the man. We are transported to the period of Chuanxiu and the battling kingdoms, the kingdom of Zhen. To the immortal warlord Ding Ren. He appealed to the gods of the major rivers and lakes, and wanted them to listen to his command. The dragon will rush, the god of lightning will wake up, a strong wind will blow and heavy rain will pour down. As it happened, the god of lightning woke up first. Then a strong wind blew and torrential rain poured down. In the crowd of people, one man stood out. He approached the warlord, and said that he had heard about Ding Zheng. He also added that he was incredibly lucky to meet him today. The commander was grateful for the praise, and asked what the mysterious stranger's name was. He asked to be called Lu, and offered to be friends. In truth, it seemed to the warlord that Buddy Lu wanted to give him some advice. The thoughtful man said it was something like advice. Events are moved to one of the houses where the tea party took place. The elderly man wondered why Lu didn't practice at home today and asked him only not to say he missed him. The man thought that the teacher's art was at the pinnacle of mastery, but Ji Xian's fame had recently even surpassed that of the master. She and he were about the same age, and he was already so famous, and it wasn't good. The master immediately realized that Lu had come for the sake of saying more than just that. His cognition is superficial and unlikely to match him, and if he really is that talented, he would want a friendship with him. The teacher in that case didn't understand what Lu was waiting for. 
After which, we were smoothly transported to the events when the commander thought that Li's friend wanted to give him some advice. The guy hoped that brother Ji Xian, that he would read his teacher's face. Suddenly, we realize Lu is reading a manhwa. I mean, he's almost directly saying that he wants to test him, this Lu was so impulsive, and Ji Xian, on the contrary, wasn't angry in the slightest. Here was the teacher, Lu and Ji Xian meeting at the same table. As the commander looked at the teacher, he saw that his soul was as calm and pure as his name. And if he put it all out in the open, it might damage the Lord's reputation, better he deliberately lie, and pretend he couldn't read his intent. And the guy replied that the teacher's complexion was unhealthy and he should pay attention to it. The teacher smiled, and thought that Ji Xian had made a mistake, after all, it can be difficult for young people to contain their excitement, but he actually thought that his disciple had lost his composure, if this was found out, his reputation would be over, so he should cover for him. The elder laughed, for everything old is replaced by everything new, and asked to look again. The situation began to heat up, need to keep sticking to the plan, need to get out of it, and he decided to say about his life energy. With courtesy, Ji Xian added that the teacher's vitality is flourishing, may the body is not completely healthy, but he will be able to recover quickly. The indignant elder again exclaimed that the latter was mistaken. He knew he needed to talk to his student, for words to the young would come quickly and go easily, and he must help him. The old man said that in this world, the new generation is replacing the old generation, it seems he can retire safely, and asked to look at him again. Ji Xian realized that this person had seen many different people in his life, he must understand that one must judge very carefully. Nervous he knew that he saw his fate through, Hu Lin after all, Hu Lin can't really think that he said the truth, people with age are increasingly difficult to think clearly, he can't cover his shame on the slope of years, and must belittle himself still. Without losing concentration, Ji Xian once again said that the elder's aura was very unstable and it was difficult for him to make a prediction. Lu thought to himself that maybe Li Xian was still very young after all, and he wasn't as strong as his teacher. Gladly, the teacher exclaimed that it was a hit exactly on target. In fact, back when he was still in his mother's womb, the master pointed to her belly and said that his weakest point was the instability of his aura. With wariness and surprise, Lo realized they were equals after all. The master hoped it would be an incentive for him to practice more to live up to his reputation, and asked if he wanted to look at it again. Realizing that a nonchalant look was the most natural state of the face, he mumbled that the teacher was not easily unraveled, nor was he admired. With complete satisfaction, Lu exclaimed his admiration for both of them. The two strongest looked at Lu, and thought the same thing, that he had had enough. When the guy got something, he wondered if he should do it. After all, it was an unknown. Sighing heavily, he thought about the outcome of the ensuing situation if he released that limbless one. Earlier, he recalled his teacher saying that his glory was beyond ability, but he could well be considered a humble and well-mannered man. At the same time, as Li Xian said that he did not want to offend anyone, but the mentor was no longer eager to comprehend the teachings, he was stuck on what he had already accomplished, however, his stamina and soul were truly admirable. Lu realized that even if they were just flattering each other, it was hard for him to admire both of them. And he opened the very box where the unknown was. After all, he truly believed that this clueless man would help them forge a true friendship. A short while later, events continued to take place in the palace, for today, the most worthy people of the Jin kingdom were gathered here. Teacher and Xian met again, the elder mumbled that the boy had greatly expanded his circumference that time. Xian knew this was also a pleasant experience, for him, their meeting was much more beneficial to him. But unexpectedly, in the meantime, a clueless man was closing in on them. He was completely side by side with both the teacher and Li Xian. They both felt the snake at their backs, and considered whether either of them needed to kill it. 
The elder wanted Ji Xian to attack, after all, he could easily deal with such a small unknown, it would be a great opportunity for him to become famous if he let the thunder strike fly. The guy also thought that let the lord attack, since he didn't need to prove anything anymore, but he should still show everyone that he wasn't too old yet. Ah Lu at the same time, thought over the fact that no matter who, one of them would rush in and strike. And then the other will look at that one with different eyes. The snake in the form of the unknown was getting closer and closer. The elder wanted young Xian to do this, and show everyone that he was better than him, and just take responsibility for the welfare of the people. At the same time, Xian wanted the elder to show everyone and prove that he could still benefit the people. Lu reading this realized that they both wanted the best for each other, and they really weren't bad people. The insidious snake was getting closer, it opened its mouth to strike with a bite. She stood in front of the two masters, and was incredibly huge in size, as well as glaring menacingly at them. And so, with a powerful motion, she delivered a crushing blow to the two of them. People started screaming and ran away in panic, for Mr. Hu and Ji Xian were swallowed by the snake. They had incredible magical abilities, what kind of horrible creature was this since it was able to absorb even them? The two forces seemed to be opposing each other, as if to support hypocrisy with all their might. Two faceless and hypocritical beings met in front of each other. And turned into the very snakes that killed them. After saying that, Lu instantly closed the book. The boy didn't understand how it was possible that the kindness of three people had spawned a serpent. If one of them had told the truth, the tragedy would not have happened, they could have become good friends. Selenus also thought about the story, but didn't know what to say to it either. A boon, the very same magic artifact could resist the two-headed serpent. Some time later, the know-nothing hunter along with the hero walked through the city, for they wanted to find the serpent. The guy was amazed at the fact that a snake was roaming the city. But the know-nothing hunter was hesitant, for he wanted to finish his inspection faster and go to the city, but the mechanism warned that there was a 96% chance that the serpent would catch up with them. Taking the mechanism in hand, Lu asked him why not. Jing Hong realized that everyone would want to feast on the injured Selenus, for he was like a sweet candy for the serpent right now. Suddenly, two blood-red gazes settled on the hero and the hunter. It was a serpent, and it was incredibly close to them. They continued walking unsuspecting. The wise man ordered Lu to go ahead, for he must leave him behind. Outraged, the guy immediately began to deny, for he must confront the serpent. If he goes fishing and jumps in the water with the bait, the fish won't bite. Hunter Jinghong ordered the mechanism to follow Lu. And now they were together as bait for a huge serpent. The man left and Lu began to examine the mechanism, for he was interested in how it worked, it was like high technology from the future. Looking around, the hero realized that his comrade was gone and considered him a traitor. A moment later, the elder began to call out to the boy. After all, he was interested in where food could be found here. A little nervous, Lu pointed off to the side, and told the elder he could go into town, and him the other way. The change was taking place before his eyes, and the elder began his transformation. He thanked the guy, another head started to emerge from his head, and it was like he started to mutate. The serpent held Lu in fear, he was incredibly afraid of him. The serpent took out a second head, was hungry right now, and didn't know what to do. Baisho replied that because if he was hungry, he should look for food on earth, and he shouldn't bother his grandfather. The other head replied that though grandfather was of old, his health was good, grandfather himself replied that he would see if that health would be enough to catch him. In a flash, the hero realized that Baisho had bullied them, and now he was the one to take the fall. Baisho asked the guy not to nerd out, because if he could control the body, he'd go all in and do something about it. And the guy knew right away that in that case he was going to try that thing. 
the very mystical artifact with which you can use lightning as a weapon. Literally a second later, an incredibly strong blow from the snake's tail followed on Lu. Mocking Snake said it looks like Grandpa didn't make it. The fellow got up for the night, for the snake had underestimated him. The two-headed serpent didn't even plan to retreat, after all, Kalen had just boasted in front of them. Lu was able to ask if he needed time on offense. The presumptuous serpent asked excitedly, does the ancient unknown have enough to utter the dying words? With anger, the boy asked Baisho how long he would still have to prepare to attack the serpent. After all, the menacing serpent was so close to the guy that it could destroy him in literally one strike. But suddenly, one of the heads detected something. The mechanism announced that the probability of being bitten was 0%. And he began to set up the circuit. He was surrounded by a magical seal that was supposed to protect him from the serpent. The obscurity hunter was watching all of this, and hoped the mechanism would help him. The serpent was immobilized and they need to make a decisive attack to finish it off. The snakehead sincerely believed that he wouldn't dare to attack with a deadly attack. But the hunter did not understand why it suddenly, because of course he cannot cope with the snake, after all, he is just a man. The mocking head asked what he was doing behind his back in that case. The hunter pointed at Lu, for it was within his power to do so because he was not human. The two snake heads immediately turned around to see who would be their assassin. But once they turned around, they found nothing, just the trail. When they looked up, they saw Lu who was preparing an incredibly strong attack with a new artifact. They were amazed by Lu's power and greatness, for they absolutely did not expect such strength from an ordinary guy. The heroes rushed to attack the ruthless two-headed snake with incredible strength and power. And with just a single attack, chopped the snake's flesh into pieces. Both heads screamed furiously in pain, the scream could be heard throughout the neighborhood. After all, the guy managed to severely wound an incredibly powerful snake. This ability was a lot cooler than he thought. His companion watched him without the slightest doubt. Using his new ability, he installed the mechanism directly into the serpent's body. And the one using lightning kept hitting the enemy with powerful attacks. As suddenly, the serpent enveloped Jinghong and Lu with its torso, they clearly didn't expect it. Jinghong already he wouldn't be able to get out, but he didn't understand how Lu himself had fallen into this trap. This all happened because he didn't have the energy, he was too spent to set up the scheme. The two-headed serpent wondered why they were going to keep him inside this circuit. One of the heads asked if they really thought it would be easier to defeat the great serpent that way. Lu begged Jinghong to think of something, after all, he was an expert. Suddenly, the man asked the guy if he had heard for weaknesses. And he had indeed heard, there was even a saying, strike the enemy in the heart. The man immediately exclaimed what the guy was waiting for, for it was with him. But he had only heard the saying, and didn't know where this snake's weak spot was. A moment later, the serpent squeezed them even tighter, and they squealed in pain. If they don't do something now, there won't be another chance. Jing Hong said that his weak spot was his heart and asked Lu to close his eyes and feel. He began his meditation, in order to realize where his heart was beating. The boy realized with horror that he couldn't feel anything. But Selenus calling him a fool showed him that the heart was here. This place was right at my fingertips. Lu along with Selenus combined all of their remaining strength to deliver an incredibly powerful attack right into the heart of the incredibly evil snake. And with the strongest attack, a hit was made right in the heart. Once the hero attacked, he immediately began to watch the snake's reaction and then what would happen next. The serpent screamed, he was in incredibly intense pain, and his body began to bleed instantly. It was a great result, and the man asked him to attack again. The hero hesitated, for he might not be able to do so a second time. 
Since Baisho's wound still hadn't healed, every time he used the ability twice in a short period of time, his corresponding part would stop working. And now, he couldn't even move his arm. But out of his last strength, he used his Thunder Step ability directly into the heart of the serpent. With inner calmness, the man said it was worth it to leave, for they wouldn't be able to defeat him today. The serpent immediately looked swiftly at his enemies, and wanted to see how they would get away. The two heads rushed out lightning fast to attack the heroes. The hero didn't even think of giving up, because they had fought for so long. Smiling he realized he had thought of something new. The heads were incredibly close, and now had to attack the two guys. Suddenly, Lu jumped up, and shouted that this would be his last blow. With furious power, he gathered all his strength into one blow, and was about to finish off the enraged serpent. There was no limit to his strength, and it seemed as if he himself had become limbless.